This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFBLP 101.9 FM. Teen meeting. Um, a little bit about the procedures here that we'll observe tonight. If you do wish to speak, there are yellow slips of paper on the back countertop. Um, please fill one out and hand it to Ryan at the front here when you come forward to speak. Um, please begin speaking by giving us your name and your address. And the way that this works is first the city makes their presentation on the item that's before us on the agenda. Secondly, the applicant can come forward and state their case, um, put at whatever detail they'd like into the presentation. At that point, then it's opened up to a public hearing and people are allowed to come forward and speak. Um, and then once the pub public hearing is done, we close the floor and then a motion is made and discussion follows between the commission members themselves. The first item on our agenda tonight, which I'm going to kind of change, is a welcome and introduction to new members. Um, Mr. Jeremy Grajert was just recently elected to the City Council and is now Planning Commission member. Uh, Mr. Terry Weld is um, delayed and we will do his introduction later on. So the first item on our agenda is a public hearing for recommendation to rezone property from TR1A to R2 on Normandale Road. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. It's an honor to be here with you tonight, giving my first presentation, so hopefully first of many. As noted, uh, this is a request to rezone property from TR1A to R2, so from temporary zoning to permanent R2 zoning. Uh, there are four properties in question uh, initiated by the applicant at uh, 5526 Norman Hill Road. here okay and again the proposed zoning of the property would allow the applicant uh, in this case to obtain a building permit for a new garage uh, there are three other single-family homes in this area included in the rezoning is noted in yellow highlighting here uh, companies of plan itself uh, does identify the area as being appropriate for low-density residential which includes the r2 zoning in its definition the surrounding area is mostly zoned r2 a little hard to see some of that here but we'll uh, be discussing this a little bit more de in detail uh, under the discussion items uh, later on in the agenda uh, in reference to this uh, this neighborhood specifically we can see a vast majority of the properties are labeled as R2 so there's a currently a mixture of existing single-family homes as well as duplexes uh, staff does believe the request is consistent with a comprehensive plan and compatible compatible with the surrounding development. So with that, staff does recommend approval of the application. Item will be considered by City Council at a public hearing May 7th, and then therefore uh, an ordinance the following night, uh, May 8th. So I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Allen? I don't see any at this right. point. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Would they like to come forward? If you'd like to come forward, please do. <coughs> please state your name and your address. Dennis Rao, 5526 Normandale. Uh, I just want to put an additional garage behind okay. my residence there because I got a few too many toys. I want to be able to store them. So okay. That's, that's basically it. Yeah. Very good. Are there any questions for the applicant? I have one. Okay. Um, I see that in the northwest corner here, well, it would actually be the northeast corner, your house is down here, okay? Right. But I see that one is also temporary residential zoning. He don't, didn't want to um, come in for the rezoning so that it was all uniform? I only talked to a few of my neighbors. Okay. Um, all our houses out there, when we got annexed in, didn't get rezoned. Okay. Very good. Well, if, he, if that person wants to do something in the future, they'll just have to come before us. Yep. Thank you. Any yep. questions for the applicant before I let him go? 
I don't see any. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. Commissioner Peterson. I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, next item on the agenda. You're all set. Next item on the agenda, public hearing final action for a pole sign for Mills Fleet Farm. Good evening. This is the property located south of 94, east of Highway 93, uh, the Mills Fleet Farm site. Here's the proposed pole sign. The cap is included in the sign the uh, identification sign for Mills Feet Farm and an LED message center sign. Here's one of the wall signs, actually two of the wall signs. Auto service is not included in the, in the conditional use, but the LED message center sign is. Also in your packet is uh, elevation for the new store. And the, the LED sign is located on the west end. It's hard to see on that, but this is a zoom in of those signs. We'll leave that one up. So you're looking at two different conditional use permits tonight. One for the pole sign and another one for the second electronic message center sign, the LED sign. The property was rezoned last year to C3P uh, and the site plan was developed for the Mills Street Farm. The proposed pole sign, which is in front of you, is 40 feet in height uh, and 375 square feet. Two message center signs are proposed. Again, one on the building and one on the pole sign. Regarding the request for this, uh, the sign code does allow staff to approve up to 200 square feet. Uh, and with this conditional use, uh, you can go up to almost 400 square feet. The criteria for review is in your packet. The Mills Street Farm site is approximately 25 acres in size, has 920 feet of frontage along Old Town Hall Road. The overall size of the store is approximately 218,000 square feet. For the regarding the request for the second LED sign is attached in your package for review. Again, as noted before, one is on the building and one is on the pole sign. The primary intent of the ordinance, uh, the staff believes, is to assure that the operation of those LED signs are consistent and do not conflict with each other. Uh, and the distance between the two signs is approximately 500 feet. Due to the location of the signs related to each other and the, in, and the distance in between the signs, uh, we do not believe that it is going to be a conflict between the two signs since the site is very large. Staff would recommend approval of the request of both conditional uses. Uh, noted that the LED sign should not stroll and emanation between the signs shall not just be displayed. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Ryan? Commissioner Grantland. The side view or the edge on view seems to suggest that there's a message center on each of the two faces of this. Would that be counted separately? No, that is one sign. Uh, just more or less so it has two faces, but you can only view one sign from each side. And that's the same message centers. That is correct. Are there, Commissioner Peterson? What's the difference between scrolling and animation? That is a good question. Scrolling is more or less so the message would be scrolling through. Uh, like bird seed is 999, it would scroll. Bird seed is 999, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, animation between the signs would be like a, a picture in between the strolling of a, of a discount price and then uh, a picture of gas and then it would be another advertisement. I noticed in the conditional use permit that was, that was approved for the Action City that uh, the message not display scroll or any animation at all <clears throat> where we're looking at not be allowed to scroll with no animation between changes. Correct. So, okay. I'll. When we make the motion, mm -hmm. I'll make a slight amendment. <clears throat> Are there any, uh, any other questions for Ryan? 
I don't see anything. Is the applicant here? Yes. Good evening. Um, I'm Tom Grobo. I'm the project manager for this um, for the Mills Fleet Farm Store uh, with uh, Nagel Signs from Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, we've done a lot of these uh, stores over the last 15 years or so. Um, and in, uh, part of that process, we're applying for the permits. Uh, Mills has a standard um, sign package that they like to use, and these changes will allow us to keep most of that. Uh, the extra square footage uh, will allow us to use the signs that we normally use and still maintain our good visibility. The, uh, the second message center, is on, the one on the building is kind of, is, is much smaller. It's actually more uh, to be viewed from the parking lot or from the gas mart. Um, in this instance, they do have it out on the corner of the building, so it, it is next to a road, but it is much smaller than the other one. It's more, it's intended to be a little more local. And, uh, and they can be operated as the staff has recommended uh, with no problem. Uh, even though that does show a graphic, that doesn't have to uh, move. All of, you know, it, it has that capability, but um, so that's about uh, about all I can add to it. Um, are there any questions? Are there any questions for the applicant? <clears throat> I have one. So, are you anticipating the sign on the big silo sign moving and scrolling, or are you looking at a static message? No, they can be static. Okay. Uh, it has the capability to do all those things, but uh, if you know if it's required to be static, it can be static. It can dis display text or images, but they they won't scroll or be animated. Okay. Very good. Any questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing, and I'd be looking for a motion. Commissioner Peterson. I'd like to make a motion that we recommend approval of conditional use permit with the display not being allowed to scroll or have animation in the display, as opposed to in between <clears throat> changes in the display. Attic message with with scroll, yeah. Okay. And, and any pictures are static also. Okay. That's you, that's more conforming to what was approved for the, the action city, and being that this is next I ninety four, I think that'd be best. Okay. Does that need to be done as an amendment to the? Uh, I believe that can simply be. Uh, an amended condition as part of the original motion here so okay so we'd be looking for a second I'll for the motion it. we have a motion and a second any discussion seeing none I'll call the question all those in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion carries you're all set all right next item on the agenda for recommendation is sort of certified survey map for 202 Mount Washington Avenue Again, Madam Chair and members of the Commission, again before you this evening is a request to approve a certified survey map or CSM, in this case with right of way dedication at 202 Mount Washington Avenue. Typically, these wouldn't necessarily come forward to Planning Commission uh, or uh, subsequently to City Council, although well, that is the, the case here because of the dedication of a small portion of right of way uh, with in relation to the proposed certified survey map. So here's the location, aerial photo, uh, it's a large parcel you see here. Uh, there's an existing house, garage, and the applicant uh, is every day surveying and engineering on behalf of the property owner, Mr. Ryan White, is uh, looking to subdivide that essentially through the certified survey map process to four different lots, which is the maximum allowed through that process. 
This is the before picture. This is not in your packet with these uh, drawings here, but thank you to Mr. John Jensko. We, we have uh, kind of a little sneak peek into how the drawing that you have in your packet came to be in terms of dedicating through quick claim deeds uh, portions of property into right of way and then trading back uh, parcel B as you see here uh, back to the property owner. So with that then you see the after photo essentially with uh, all those lines cleaned up and then the area in question tonight is this literal six inches of uh, by 175 feet so not quite 88 square feet uh, property that is being dedicated as right-of-way uh, to clean up this help clean up this entire area so again if we have questions Mr. Jensko with our engineering staff is here to help answer that you can see some of the uh, new pins, markers that were identified through surveying to help clean up the entire right of way around Mount Washington Avenue in this area. And again, that's why this is before you is the dedication of right of way in this specific area. So, with all that as background, uh, staff is recommending approval of uh, this application and it will be considered by City Council at its Tuesday, May 8th meeting. So, I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Allen? Commissioner Peterson. This may be for Mr. <coughs> Mr. Gensko. Is this just catching up that the the old right of way used to be a three rod road, where now they're going to 50 feet? No, it's more complicated than that. Um, okay. The original plats through there didn't have bearings and distances, and so the um, right of way was kind of fudged into our GIS, for lack of a better term. Um, it started out uh, on this area, there's a little more information that'll be a little hard to see, but there's some dashed lines that go like that. Um, I've got it kind of with blue highlighter on there. That's how we interpreted the original plat, and that's what came into our GIS. Then over time, that got improved. Uh, there was another interpretation in the second set of plat books that happened that added the curve. But you can see the curve doesn't follow the pavement. And the pavement had to be where it was because of where the roads are, or because of the slopes. And so this is just a way of getting the right of way to match where the pavement is. And then it was platted as 50 feet all the way through. But by the time we got to here with this plat mirroring up to it, that dimension only became 49 and a half feet. And that's the reason for the extra half foot here is to get that to be the same 50 feet as going through the rest of it. Okay, so you have 50 feet all the way around this property then. Yes. And and that's enough to for the roadway. It's as much as we'll have. Okay. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be able to build a road into that. What it okay. really means is if sidewalks go in there in the future, it's just going to be all road and sidewalks. There won't be okay. much of a boulevard. All right, thank you, John. Are there any other questions? Mr. Allen, I don't see any. Right, thank thank you. you. Let's see, we are the applicants, so there's no one else to come forward. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. I'd be looking for a motion. Commissioner so You moved? So okay. You mentioned we're the applicant. This is just for the right-of-way dedication, but the, the subdividing the lot, isn't there an applicant for that? Do we, is, yes, yes, is the applicant here? Okay, if you'd like to come forward and. Yeah, my name's uh, Ryan Waite. I live at 4523 Old Wells Road. Um, I own the property at 202 Mount Washington. Um, we are proposing a four uh, lot CSM, and in doing so, we came across these problems, so we're just trying to get them resolved. Okay. And I would love to give you guys some land to resolve them. 
Very good. Are there any questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? This is a public hearing. <laughs> well, we had a public hearing, and then uh, never mind. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing, and I guess I'd be looking for a motion again. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, next item four on the agenda for approval, a site plan for mini storage. Hmm? Oh, the apartment, I'm sorry. Some, some days, okay. Um, for approval, a site plan, a 30 unit apartment building. <clears throat> Good evening again. This project came before you back in February. Plan Commission recommended approval. City Council approved it. It's off of Jeffers Road, uh, south of the North Crossing. Here's a good aerial photograph of the site. The home builders visit Eau Claire buildings here. The apartment building is going here. Shared <coughs> pond here. North Crossing to the north. To the west is Jeffers Road. Here's the final site plan for the project, showing some landscaping, street trees, retaining walls around the site, pond and a pond. Grading plan for the site. The applicant did provide some color aerials or color photographs for the project that he's doing in Chippewa Falls. Similar project, this is, I think this is a 12 unit or a six unit, I'm not 100% sure. But you get the idea of the facade and color, brick facade on the bottom, garage doors. And then another project. <clears throat> this is the final site plan for the 30 unit apartment complex located at 4325 Jeffers Road. The proposal does show 14 one beds, 16 two beds. The general development plan for the project was 13 one beds and 17 two beds. However, the density remains consistent with the approved general development plan. The site plan shows 22 attached garages, four detached garages, 22 surface parking stalls for a total of 46 stalls. The required parking is 46. Site access is through Jeffers Road private driveway, as shown here on the end of the cul-de-sac. The private drive does not have an adequate right-of-way uh, for street trees or for a sidewalk. You may note uh, in the elevation, there's only a portion of the site that has a sidewalk from this doorway to the parking lot and then all the way over to Jeffers Road sidewalk. This portion is head in parking they have a detached garage for storage. This part has no sidewalk. To get to a sidewalk to the site, uh, staff believes that it is, doesn't seem feasible. This is a different parcel as well. Uh, that project was completed in 2006 when we didn't have the sidewalk ordinance connection. The landscape plan does note street trees and foundation plantings. The architecture is shown on, the, on the, these attached drawings. A concern from the general development plan was the long-term maintenance of the private drive and the utilities. City staff has been working with the property owners on a long-term maintenance and uh, should be filed prior to obtaining a building permit. A four-stall bike rack is shown on the building in front of it. A proposed sign shall meet our three district standards. In your report is the grading and drainage along with public utilities, traffic, and transit. Attached in your packet uh, is for your review. We would just note the condition that the grading and drainage shall be approved prior to getting a building permit. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Ryan? 
Commissioner Grager. Uh, Mr. Petrie, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been following this a bit uh, even before I was on, this, on the city council or on this commission and I had a question about, um, you know, I, I know you looked into the sidewalk issue and we obviously have complications with it being a, um, you know, a private drive reaching there and, and two separate, is it two separate owners? It, it will be. It Currently will be. it's one owner. Okay. Um, what are what were some of the options that you looked at? Um, did you look did you look at putting a sidewalk on the south side of the private drive? Correct. So if you I don't know if you've been out to the site, Scott, Mr. Scott Allen and myself visited the site two weeks ago. Uh, there's an elevation change here, and then this property owner I don't have a parcel map, but the parcel owner the parcel to the south is like right about here. It's shared driveway with the part with this parcel, um, and there's elevation change here. Um, what I was thinking was they, they do a sidewalk like that to get you to this point, but then this head in parking becomes a, a, a challenge as well. Uh, and if they have a truck parked for the uh, the detached garage, that just becomes a nightmare for the pedestrians trying to get out to Jeffers Road or to the Holiday Station across the street. So we did look at that, but it, we don't see it being a feasible option at this time. Yeah, I have a follow-up question. Go ahead. Uh, did you look at putting a, a, a requiring a sidewalk in the site plan itself, or at least from where that new, uh, well, where the within the site plan, I guess. So that from the from that roundabout or cul-de-sac there. Did you, uh, did you look at fitting in a sidewalk from there to the doors of the building? Because wouldn't that be required, I guess would be my question, from, the, from our ordinance related to site plans uh, and sidewalk connectivity? I guess I'm a little confused. Are you saying from this point? Yeah, from that point to the, to the doors of the building so people can get... There, there, Jeremy, there is a... Uh, if I can't, let me zoom in. There is a retaining wall right here. And it appears to be a, I think it's a nine foot retaining wall. So it doesn't okay. seem too feasible at this time. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Peterson? As far as the sidewalk on the property itself, that this really isn't a, a a public building where there would be a whole lot of public visiting it. It would be mainly the residents and visitors. That is correct. Correct. Um, does the property east of here have access elsewhere? Do you know? The, the, there's a, a lot that goes north-south east of this property. Okay. I don't believe so, no. Okay. Well, there's Looks like there's a cul-de-sac. Looks like there's a cul-de-sac south of there where th that property could access that cul-de-sac and wouldn't come through this property anyway. Probably not. Those. Okay. So I, I, in that, this really isn't. You know, the public isn't going to frequent this place. It's going to be the residents and their visitors. I don't see a need for the sidewalk on the property itself. So. Are there any other questions for Ryan? I don't see anything. Oh, Commissioner Peterson. One more. Um, <clears throat> has the fire department reviewed this layout in that there's a couple of tight turns coming into this property? That is correct. They did ask for this turnaround here as well. Okay. That would be a no parking area. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Grager. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Petrie, I see the section on page 24 on transit. Um, so when it's determined that, so it says that it is not likely to generate much demand for transit. Is that because of the distance from the closest transit stop? That would be my understanding, yes. Okay. So if, it was, if there was a transit stop nearby, then it would be a different determination. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't see anything at this point. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Thank you. 
Sean Bohan, 1105 Elm Avenue West, Menominee, uh, Wisconsin. Um, I'm just here on behalf of uh, the owners, um, just to answer any questions that you may end up having. I'm going to be the engineer on the project. Are there any questions for the applicant? I don't see any, but I have one. Okay. Did the location of the building move from the initial site plan? Was it, was it kind of flip-flopped? Was um, the building closer facing nor the north crossing with the um, parking more in line with the cul-de-sac? Or am I just imagining that? Okay. I, I guess I'd have to end up looking at the general development plan and see. I, I know that there were portions of the building that um, became a little bit smaller. Okay. And stuff. Okay. Um, otherwise, we do have it um, up against setbacks, that type of thing. So. Okay. Very good. Are there any other questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank, Thank you. you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. Commissioner Brenholt. I'll move approval with recommendations, staff recommendations. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Commissioner Grager. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, uh, I do have some concerns about the site plan uh, not having uh, sidewalks to be able to safely get through that, particularly the area, um, the driveway, uh, and around to the, a lot of the doors of the building. Um, and I imagine the building and the site could be redesigned to be able to accommodate a sidewalk. Um, and, it, and it appears from our, um, from our ordinances that, that we prefer to have site plans that actually have a, a safe pathway. Um, so that's, that's a major concern of mine here. And um, I'm not sure if anyone else holds that, but I just thought I would express that. Any other discussion? Commissioner Peterson. I'm going to slightly disagree with that in that this is a dead end. It's a cul-de-sac and the only people that would really use the sidewalk are the people that are in the building. I, I don't see that there's going to be a high pedestrian movement in the area. It would be those that are using the building and they're going to know that driveway as well as anybody else. So, Commissioner, Gra Commissioner Grager. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel that the safety of the people living there is is definitely like where I'm coming from here. And if I was to live in that building, I would be walking and or biking uh, through that area a lot. And um, so it would be a, a concern for me if I did live in that building. But um, so I, regardless of the volume or who happens to be using the space, I, I, I remain concerned about it. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries. All right. Now we're going to take one slight break from our agenda um, to introduce and seat our newest member, uh, City Council member Terry Weld, who is well familiar with this council. Thank you for coming all the way from Germany to join us. <laughs> not a problem not a problem okay um, Terry I don't know if you've got your notes but right now we are on um, item number six and we're looking for approval site plan for a mini storage building on London Road Staff did receive a revised site plan on Friday afternoon. That's not in your packet. It is on the screen now. The, the only adjustment they made was they got rid of the 32 foot wide driveway and they made it 30 foot. This is a mini storage facility proposed at 4755 London Road. The site plan shows two proposed mini storage buildings with a common driveway. This is consistent with the C3P zoning and the general development plan allows for commercial development. And noted on the site plan too, they are avoiding the wetlands to the north and to the east. Again noted, the site plan has been changed to allow for a 30 foot wide driveway that will be taken off the condition to number two. 
Along the driveway is a mixture of shrubs. Street trees are provided along London Road. The lighting shall meet all city requirements. They are, if they are proposing a sign, the maximum signage allowed is 250 square feet. Attached to the report is the grading and drainage, along with utilities, traffic, and transit. I'd be happy. Uh, there is one condition that we should note uh, before prior to getting a building permit is the grading and drainage shall be approved by the city engineer. We would be happy to answer any questions for this site plan. Are there any questions for Ryan? I don't see any at this time. Oh, Commissioner Peterson, sorry. In that they have they have withdrawn their request for a 32-foot driveway, we would be voting on a 30-foot driveway then. That is correct. You okay. just remove that item. Okay, any other questions for Ryan? All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? Good evening again. Uh, Sean Bohan, 1105 Elm Avenue, West Menominee. Again, here on behalf of uh, the developer, I'm just here to answer any questions if you have any. Are there any questions for the applicant? I don't see any at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. This is a public hearing. If there's anyone who'd like to come forward and speak. If there's anyone who'd like to come forward and speak. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. I'll move. Approve. Thank you. We have a motion. A we, second. We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next item on the agenda for discussion and direction, the Mill Run neighborhood rezoning west of Mill Run Road, south of Renee Drive. Agenda item number two was to rezone four of these properties. Uh, Ms. Ebert asked the question, why are you rezoning the rest of them? Mm -hmm. Well, staff thought maybe we should rezone the rest of them. If you remember last year, there was a duplex burned down on Mary Place. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get a building permit until they got permanent zoning. Uh, this, pro this area was all annexed in 1991, according to the records that the city has. Um, it would make sense to rezone the rest of the temporary zoning to a permanent zone. So if they do want to get a detached garage permit or any kind of building permit, the zoning would be in compliance. According to my math, we have eight properties that are currently zoned, not the ones that just got recommended approval for rezoning, but eight temporary zoned. Three properties that are zoned R1, which are the yellow shaded one, two, and three, mm -hmm. which is a little odd too. The rest of the entire neighborhood is zoned R2. Now, if you go east of this site along the golf course and uh, power lines, it's zoned R2P. Again, the properties were annexed in 91 and never actually got permanent zoning. This would reduce the non-conforming of temporary zoning. Uh, all eight properties, according to the assessor's records, are single-family homes. The change in zoning would allow them to attain a building permit, like mentioned. And like I mentioned before, Mary Place had temporary zoning and a duplex got on fire and burnt down and they tried to go for a building permit. And we delayed them several weeks to getting that permit. We would like to have a discussion with the plan commission and some kind of direction if we wanna go forward. Uh, staff thought of three options, potentially options. Uh, you would rezone the eight temporary properties to R2 with consistency with the neighborhood. You could uh, rezone the R, uh, the temporary zoning and the three R1 zonings. So it'd be including one, two, and three. We believe those are single family homes. However, they're not, they're not zoned R2. Or we just do nothing and wait till the property owners decide when they need a building permit or, or when they come into the staff asking for a building permit, then we rezone their property at that time. Those are the three options. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions, concerns that you may have. Are there any questions? Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, which option does the city prefer out of the I think three? we would prefer to the first option, rezoning the rest of the properties to R2 and leaving the R1 destination. But we did want to throw in that third option just in case. It seems like a no-brainer to me. Commissioner Radabell. We, we did something similar uh, over across from Mayo Hospital. 
That is correct. That is actually a neighborhood association that was directed by them. This area does not have a neighborhood association at this time. So staff thought it would be a better idea to just be proactive on the rezoning. Right, one more question. Would it, would it be worth your time to maybe reach out to the other folks and see if they want to come in as R2 as well? Just tell them what's going on. That, that would be a good option as well. We can definitely notify them by mail and then give them you know, a couple weeks to notify us. Commissioner Peterson. Oh, that was my question too, is getting in contact with the property owners that are going to be involved in this because we are dealing with their lives and their property. Correct. What we did notify the ones that would be potentially rezoned. We have not heard from anyone. We did not notify the ones that are zoned R1 at this time. Now they would have been notified as well with the rezoning of the four parcels that we just heard on item number two. We notified within 300 feet of that buffer. So they've been notified, but None of us, none, the only person that contacted us was the gentleman that was here today who's trying to get the building permit at this time. Okay, and that, what we're, we're proposing on doing is a separate action from what was done tonight. That I, is correct. I this would, would be a, a new public hearing rezoning the remaining uh, temporary zones, I think eight, eight properties, but they're on multiple streets. Okay, I, it'd be nice to notify the property owners and those within the the 300 feet or whatever That's the correct. criteria is. Thank you. Mr. Allen. Uh, absolutely. To, to uh, confirm that, that was uh, staff's uh, preference as well, is to be sure we reached out to each of those individual property owners uh, and uh, make sure that uh, they're aware of, of the city-initiated rezoning. That's really what it would come forward as. So it would be a city as applicant moving forward in this case. Uh, that's not entirely unusual, especially dealing with a temporary rezoning situation. But like uh, Mr. Petrie mentioned, we want to make sure you know, make, uh, we would look at those R1 zonings uh, to make sure that they're agreeable as well if we move forward in that direction. But yeah, we absolutely, we'll be reaching out to them, certainly. Okay. Um, there's no disadvantage to the property owners to be go from R1 to an R2 zoning. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, we could do an analysis and see if they have, you need 10,000 square foot for a duplex. Okay. Um, but most of them are single family already out there. Most of them. Now, there have been a few. This property right here and this property and these two, mm -hmm. they have, they're under, these two are under construction. These two had new duplexes built within the last past three years because I reviewed those site plans. Now, okay. those site plans are administratively approved by staff if they meet all of the compliance with the multifamily design standards. Okay. Yeah, I seem to remember that the one that was built on the end of Cindy Court with the kind of the funny lot line mm -hmm. um, where it's on the court but then it goes way up, that I remember that coming before us at a certain point. Any other comments? I have to put my two cents worth in. How many of you guys remember the July 1980 storm that came through with straight line winds, 115 miles an hour? Okay, so this neighborhood out here at that time was primarily built, owned, and rented out by Menard Corporation. And that neighborhood was decimated with that storm. Um, probably 100 properties were at least partially destroyed because the straight line winds went through there. So that's kind of the history of it. They were not very well built at that time, so I'm glad to see that most of it has been rebuilt as single family over the years. So what actions you need from us? Just direction to go to a public hearing? Correct. Okay. Do you want that in the form of a motion? Sure, yeah, works. Okay, mm -hmm. I'd be looking for a motion then. Commissioner I'll, Peterson? I'll so move. Do we have a second? Commissioner Grandlin? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, next item on the agenda, code compliance items. Anything? Um, any future agenda items? I have one. Yes. Would we like to do a plaque for Ms. Uh, Mitchell and Mr. Klinkhammer Absolutely. at the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, I call for adjournment. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. 
NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.